on starships, and why many look so human. Hello again, thank you for being here with me once more, I hope you are all happy and well today. I am Murray. This information can be seen as science fiction, or as the viewer sees best, and I post it for entertainment purposes only, but I take my information very seriously, for whoever has eyes to see. One of the most common ideas on Earth about extraterrestrial craft, is that they should be extremely different from anything humans can even think or conceive in their minds, therefore if something is relatable, or familiar in their heads, it simply cannot be of extraterrestrial origin. This concept of a craft, or any other piece of equipment from a non-human, off-planet race, being incomprehensible, and therefore extremely different from anything humans have on Earth, is directly related, and derives from another concept that is even more prevalent in all UFOs and extraterrestrial researchers. The concept that humans are indigenous to planet Earth, or even worse, that they evolved there in a Darwinian manner, and therefore cannot exist as humans elsewhere in outer space. Nowadays, even this concept is being twisted with the flat globe movement, which states that as the space agencies lie all the time, which is rather easy to prove it is so, they must be lying as well about the shape of the Earth, and that governments are imposing, or pushing the idea that the Earth is round, as a disinformation campaign against the people. When in fact it is the other way round, it is the flat globe movement which is being imposed, as yet another mechanism to confuse and control the population. Because with no Earth as a sphere, there is no outer space, and therefore no extraterrestrials, with all the convenient mind control consequences of that. As I explained in my previous video, they add the results of several small agendas to cause the same effect as a large one would, but covertly done with those small things so the people cannot see their real intentions. As my group and I have stated so many times before, there is a lot more humanity outside Earth, the very same species in fact, and others who look alike yet are not the same species, and yet others who are different, and others that are extremely different as well, and so are their starships, as would be expected. So yes, some extraterrestrial starships are extremely different from anything comprehensible or relatable by anyone on Earth, and others, those of space humans or Lyrians, are perfectly recognizable as of human origin, and with many very familiar components. It is not one thing or the other, there are extremely different and hard to understand extraterrestrial craft, and others that are so familiar anyone would swear that they are of terrestrial manufacture, and every variant in the middle of those two exists as well. There is more than enough space out there for everything to exist. Space-dwelling interstellar humans, called Lyrians, move around vast sectors of this galaxy, traveling in their starships to visit their space-human neighbors, many of whom are their kin, in the exact same way, and with the same mental construct, or idea, as humans on Earth travel to distant nations, where there may be important cultural differences, but still all recognizable as more of humankind. As there are flight paths and aerial commercial routes on Earth, there are the same in space, where starships of all origins travel using assigned corridors, and departure arrival protocols, all for everyone's safety. This is not a case of who copied who, the humans or the non-terrestrial Lyrian humans, because every species shares the same base mental constructs that shape ideas, all through the greater collective unconscious where more than one individual may be having the same idea, genuinely coming from their minds with no plagiary of any kind, yet others may be having the same idea far away, and with no previous contact of any kind with one another. Because they are all members of the same species, we are all telepathically connected through the ethers, and therefore are fragments of some sort of greater individual, who as a concept we can call, the greater human Lyrian kind, 
who in turn is also part of another greater individual, and so on and so forth, until we are all united as one, as variations of source itself. This finally brings us to their starships, which I can describe using a few words, as simply very advanced aircraft, such as your commercial airliners, but much more complex and evolved, yet still recognizable as of human Lyrian origin. Many components and flight instruments in those space human-built starships are simply variants of those found in terrestrial aircraft, an example of these is the artificial horizon, which if any human pilot sees one in a Tejetan, Antarian or Centauri craft, they would jump and say, hey I know that thing. A word of caution about artificial horizons here, although they all look almost exactly the same, the way they work, and how they must be read is different, because in most artificial horizons on Earth, the little guiding figure of an aircraft is fixed, and it is the line behind it which moves to indicate the inclination, and the roll movements of a craft, when in most non-human starships, it is the other way around. The line that represents the horizon is fixed, and it is the little aircraft figure the one that moves in the dial of the instrument, also to indicate what the craft is doing. This difference is also found on Earth, Western aircraft use the layout in the first example, and Russian aircraft use the second layout. This difference in reading has caused many crashes, when one pilot who has had flight experience with one layout is transferred to an aircraft with another, because he cannot read correctly what the aircraft is doing. In the case of starships, artificial horizons are installed in all who are capable of atmospheric flight, as an artificial horizon is quite useless in a starship that can only travel through space. In the case of Talika, she is capable of atmospheric flight, as she must descend to the star ports on the surface of planets in the Tejata star system and elsewhere, so she is equipped with artificial horizons, both fully computerized, and mechanical ones as well. And logically all Tejetan fighter craft, and smaller shuttles are also equipped with it. Other very familiar flight instruments, are airspeed indicators, altimeters, and navigation indicators. On Tejetan craft, they can even be programmed to indicate their readings in human terms and not in Tejetan language and measuring units. It is quite obvious to us here that the controllers of Earth, in their human and non-human variants, want to keep the idea that humankind is indigenous to Earth, and that it only exists, and can exist there because it is one of the most important concepts, if not the most important concept necessary to keep the illusion of the 3D matrix on Earth, that is the group of ideas that make up human culture there. In the minute a large enough group of people on Earth realized that there is more humanity outside, all their lives would start to crumble one after another, with a domino effect, and so will their matrix, and this means no more of their sick game the one they love so much. I know this may contradict what they want with their alien invasion agenda, but it's complicated. From the point of view of a non-terrestrial interstellar human, the existence of a greater humankind, which exists and lives among countless stars in this galaxy alone is completely natural and obvious so natural it is impossible to conceive the idea that humans could evolve and exist only on one single planet, to the point where we see that idea as plain stupidity. Using an old example, old but very helpful, and expanding on it a lot more. It is as if a group of people were locked up on an island such as Alcatraz, and made to think that it is all that exists, and that there is nothing more but endless water out there with perhaps one or another barren rock far away, hostile and void of life, when in fact they are on an island in the middle of San Francisco Bay, with countless thousands of other free humans coming and going past their island, all day and all night long, conducting their business. But the people on the island cannot see San Francisco, 
and all the shipping moving in and out past their island, because there is a dense fog covering them, allowing them only to see slight glimpses that perhaps there is more life out there. Sometimes they can see suspicious and unexplainable little lights in the fog that covers their island, especially at night. When they ask their guards what those are, they are told that they are only atmospheric anomalies that occur when the water molecules in the fog crash with one another, forming small electric charges that sometimes arch to form a visible spark, or those little lights they see, may also be swamp gas. When in fact, those little mysterious luminous balls of light are the driving lights of countless ships full of more humans, passing by. The fog that covers the island of Alcatraz does not let them see what is beyond, as the fog of lies, deception and perception manipulation, also prevents most humans from seeing that their planet Earth is in the middle of something very much like San Francisco Bay, because there is one hell lot of space traffic out here, right outside your planet, and most of it belonging to more humans. Why would this be so hard to understand, I ask? Our starships and craft look human, because we are more humans, space humans but the same species, so there is nothing weird or suspicious here. Humans as such, are literally all over space, and that is how it has always been, and that is the natural state of human beings, to be interstellar. Thank you for watching my video, and for liking sharing and subscribing, I appreciate it a lot. And I hope to see you here next time. Take care. With much love, your friend. Marie Soiru.